So uh, my talk is uh, kind of related to what uh, India talked about. Uh, oh, my, my name is Koki, and I like to talk about hex machines and how we do it now and its application. So okay, I have to talk about orientations. Uh, this is uh, about uh, mapping from reference element to the physical element. And we take this uh, Q4 finite element on quad as an example. So this is the uh, reference element. We have 25 dogs, and three dogs on each edge. And each edge has an orientation uh, indicated by the arrow. And in our definition, we define, uh, we lay out local dogs, for example, 4, 5, 6, 7, and 9, uh, so that uh, the number increases in the direction of the arrow. Uh, we can define it differently, but uh, it doesn't change the, the nature of the problem. So uh, the question, uh, so we, we, we only focus on uh, edges because this is where things become interesting. So uh, the question we want to ask is, uh, okay, we have global dogs here. Uh, how do we order global dogs on the mesh edges? So this is what uh, Fyazuric conventionally does. So we come up with some mapping from the reference element to the physical element, and we let uh, mesh edges inherit orientations of the mapped reference edges like this. So th this black, uh, black arrow is for the uh, mesh edge orientation. So uh, this one and this one are conforming. They are pointing to the same direction. And then we order uh, global dogs 50, 51, 52, following our rule. And these are actually the indices into the global, ve global vector, uh, which stores the uh, dot values of uh, some uh, function. And with this approach, uh, we can make a uh, local to global mapping like this. So this LG map is, uh, with this LG map, uh, 789 are mapped to 50, 51, 52. So this, is mapped to this. So the advantage of this approach is uh, this construction of LG map is simple. So we only have to remember 750 and just keep adding one. The disadvantage of this approach is uh, because we have already determined the orientation of this edge, uh, the mapping from this element to this element is no longer arbitrary. But uh, in this example, uh, we, can, uh, we can come up with a mapping, for example, like this, which, uh, with which we can make an uh, LG map like this, which are, again, uh, very simple. So here's another example. So the first mapping is uh, arbitrary. The second mapping has some constraint, but we can still come up with something. And we can keep doing this. And we have no problem uh, with this uh, plain strip example. But this conventional approach does not always work. And here's the uh, Mobius strip example. If we try to take the same procedure, by the time we get here, uh, we realize that uh, there is no mapping from the reference element to this last physical element. <coughs> so for example, if we did this, uh, we would have some conflict here. We don't know, uh, we have no way to determine the physical edge orientation here. And we don't know how to order those. And the problem is that uh, this happens in, uh, the same happens in hex machines. That is why we care. And we need some alternative approach. And this is how uh, we do it in Firejet currently. So what we do is uh, we determine edge orientations first, independent of the uh, mapping. And then uh, already order dogs. And then uh, we think about uh, how we do how we do mappings. Now these uh, reference element to physical element mappings are completely arbitrary. But we have to do uh, more work uh, when we make LG maps. So for example, for this element on this edge, uh, seven, eight, nine are mapped to fifty-two, fifty-one, fifty. So we have to apply reverse permutation here. So this is indicated by, the, uh, uh, by these uh, black arrow and blue arrow pointing in different direction. 
And same thing happens for this element on this edge. So uh, for this 1D edge uh, example, we only have to consider two permutations. But uh, if, we, if we had, for example, a triangular facet, we would have to consider uh, six different permutations, uh, depending on how we map the difference element to the physical element. And maybe this is something uh, India will simplify. But so, uh, so okay, at least for this current approach, uh, we have to have a very good understanding of uh, how we map the difference element to the physical element and do some work to make the LG maps. But this is robust, and we can now do hex meshes uh, for P, DP, Q, DQ, finite elements. And India will ex extend this. <laughs> okay, now, uh, today I'd, I'd like to talk about uh, some application of the hex mesh, the absorbing boundary condition for the Helmholtz equation. And we are interested in solving the Helmholtz equation in this unbounded domain. Yeah, x0 is uh, some negative number. Um, we assume that there is no source on the right half space. So what we expect is the outgoing wave solution, the wave uh, propagating to the positive x direction, and there should be no incoming wave. But the standard uh, numerical methods like finite element method require a finite computational domain. So what we do is we truncate the domain somewhere. Uh, in this case, uh, we truncate the domain at x equal to zero, and we solve the standard Helmholtz equation in this smaller domain, which we call the physical domain. And then uh, we solve a Helmholtz-like equation in this small domain, small domain attached to the physical domain. And we call this uh, the artificial domain, hoping that this uh, will represent the original unboundedness. So there are many methods, uh, perfectly matched layers, uh, PMLs. This basically introduced damping in the artificial domain. And we have perfectly matched discrete layers, PMDLs, which can be derived from PMLs, but usually outperform PML. And we came up with something new uh, recently, which basically uh, generalizes uh, PMDLs. That is what uh, I'd like to introduce today. So uh, one example, we use uh, Q4 finite element, uh, Q4 or P4 finite element, and this is the Helmholtz-like equation, and this is the uh, boundary condition, a physical boundary condition we apply on the left of the boundary, uh, left of the domain, and this is the boundary condition we apply on the uh, end of the artificial domain. And gamma is complex, and we vary gamma uh, in this region in the complex plane, and this is the uh, physical domain plus artificial domain. So we have three elements in the uh, artificial domain. Uh, and in the context of BML, we say uh, we have three layers in the artificial domain. And GX is assumed to be one in the physical domain, which means this equation reduces to the standard Helmholtz equation in the physical domain and it takes some complex profile in the artificial domain, depending on the method we use, PML, PMDL, or something else. And for this example, uh, we know the exact outgoing wave solution. So what we do is, uh, given gamma, we compute solution and compare that against this U exact, and compute the error. So let's first try uh, G equal, equals to one. So basically, we solve the Helmholtz equation everywhere with Dirich boundary condition. And this boundary condition produces reflection, so we have incoming waves, so the error is large. So standard PMF, uh, G, G is one in the physical domain and takes some uh, complex polynomial profile in the artificial domain. Uh, this is, uh, we can do this in finitely using conditional. And the error is much smaller. Uh, good. And we now cons uh, consider a slightly different version of uh, PMLs. The layer-wise constant PML. Uh, G of X is just layer-wise constant. 
we can do this in fire drag uh, by nesting conditionals. And this is the error we get. Uh, we are actually expecting uh, anything better than the regular PML. And usually, this layer-wise compressed uh, layer-wise constant PML underperform the standard PML. But the proposed uh, absorbing boundary condition is based on this layer-wise constant PML. So in the artificial domain, we have layers, and on each layer, G is constant. And if we use p soda element, we need a p plus 1 Gauss legendary uh, water jackpot for full integration. But the idea here is uh, we just use p point rule instead of p plus 1 point rule. And that's it. And we can do this in fire in two steps. We first mark subdomains, physical domain and artificial domain, using mark entities method. So physical and artificial domains are labeled as uh, 8000 and 8001. And then we make, uh, when we make the bilinear form, uh, we say, oh, this is the one for the physical domain, and this is the one for the artificial domain. And in the artificial domain, we use a uh, reduced integration. And this is the error we get. Uh, we can see uh, this is a significant improvement. Uh, we can use any order uh, p. So this is uh, if p is one, it reduces to the existing PMDL formulation, and we can also show wh uh, why this works. But uh, I'm not going to talk about it today. Okay, finally, a uh, 3D example. <coughs> this is our domain. H is the mesh size. R is the refinement level. Which, are chosen, which is chosen from 1, 2, 3, 4. And L is the number of layers in each direction. So we vary L in uh, 1, 2, 3 uh, to study the impact of the number of layers uh, on the accuracy. And we again use Q4 finite element. And this is a hex mesh. And we set up a problem so that uh, this would be the uh, analytical solution. So here we have to note that uh, this is a 3D example. We have edges and corner, but uh, our 1D problem uh, naturally extends uh, to cover these cases. But uh, we have to note that, uh, for example, on this edge, we, uh, we use reduced integrations in the x and z direction, and full integration in y direction. But the actual integration happens in a different uh, element, so we have to have a good understanding of uh, how each difference axis, axis is mapped to a physical axis. This is the same consideration we made uh, when we did the uh, hex meshes, so we can now do this correctly. So quickly, uh, this is the 3D counterpart of the 1D example, the helmholtz like equation, G of X, G of Y, G of Z, these are all one in the physical domain. And these are the uh, Dirichlet boundary condition, homogene uh, Neumann boundary condition, and gamma is chosen to be 4i, the 4 is the frequency. And we compute the L2 norm, the L2, uh, norm, the norm of the error for each uh, refinement level, number of layers. So this is, the, uh, this is what we get. Uh, we can see that for each refinement level, the error decreases sharply to the discretization error as we increase the number of layers. And these discretization errors are estimated uh, using the interpolation errors. So uh, I talked about hex meshes, the implementations, uh, orientations, and uh, mapping business. And introduced a new class of absorbing boundary condition for the Helmholtz equation. And showed a three-dimensional example uh, for which uh, hex, hex meshes were essential. And if you are interested in, uh, interested in uh, why it works, uh, we have an archive here. Right, thank you.
loose integration you say degree equals b and you which wouldn't degree equal two times b plus one or something like that uh p if we if we if use p, p is the number of points that you want uh yeah so the quadrant uh yeah I know because you're um, you're uh, instructing the. Oh, hang on, what's going on? I think that says. Uh, integrand. What, degree yeah, degree. what degree integrand? What polynomial degree do you want to integrate yeah. exactly? Yeah. But then. Uh, actually, th this yeah. means <laughs> at least this box. <laughs> <laughs> this uses p points. That really? Yeah. That, that's the degree you have wrong. Maybe one degree. No, one degree yeah. that's still wrong. I'm concerned. <laughs> <laughs> it works though. <laughs> yeah, it works in this case. But all those people out there who think that they are satisfying their incomplete monitor in uh, five, but they're apparently doing the wrong thing. I'm. Let's go and read some source code. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> read some source code. That's very concerning. Thank you. Hello. <laughs> I think. Um, <laughs> No, uh, you, you can use any of them. 